we cut transit. Okay. I'd like to call this meeting to order of the Salem Kaiser School District Budget Committee. And we are going to start this evening with the Pledge of Allegiance. Christy, roll call, please. Betty Patacoli. Here. Nancy McMorris Audix. Here. Mark Bateman. Here. Lloyd Chapman. Here. Rachel Dewey Thorsett. Here. Jeff Fayville. Here. Jim Green. Here. Rick Kimball. Here. Doug Kosky. Here. Paul Kylo. Here. Chuck Lee. Here. Chris Brantley. Here. Susan Ray. Here. Thank you. We want to start tonight's meeting off with some follow-up items from previous questions from the committee. So Dr. Radich, I'll turn it over Thank to you. Thank uh, you. We received since your last budget committee meeting a question from Lloyd Chapman relative to instructional improvement and staff development. And you have before you, and I think you received electronically, the response from Michael Wolf. So you'd be happy to entertain any questions that you might have relative to this communication. Okay, no questions. We will move on. Also in your packet this evening was a chart to show the change for the 2.5 million in the general fund that we had discussed at the last meeting. And this just shows the breakdown of that 2.5 million at a top level on the front. And on the back, it shows a little more detail. And these are the things that Mike explained to us last time. Are there any questions for Mike about this document? So this is a net change to the budget. All right, we're all good. Okay, are there any other questions from committee members at this point for the superintendent or for Mike? All right, we will move forward with public testimony at this point. A couple things to explain. We do have translation services available tonight if anyone requires, so please let us know. And uh, we will start with the way it works is we need you to state your name and your address for the record. We ask that you keep your comments to three minutes. We do have our little box here the yellow light will go on when you have one minute remaining, and the red light will go on when your time is up. And first on the list, we have Laurie Fry. I have my submissions. So I am Lori Fry. Thank you for having us. I, uh, my address is 2745 Fulton Terrace South in Salem, 97302. I am one of the founding members of the Salem Kaiser Swim Boosters, one of only two remaining. I'm not here to talk about how great it's been to save swimming or about the challenges of serving on a board with 11 other swim parents from six other schools. I'm also not here to talk about the intrinsic value of swimming. I'm here to talk about money. As someone with a degree in finance, I think about money a lot. How things are funded, how taxes are spent, how budgets work. I know for many people, people the budget process is a little bit like sausage making. They don't want to know how it gets put together or what all goes inside it. But however, the complica however complicated the process might be, it always boils down to one simple dynamic. Money in, 
versus money out. And one of the most valuable things that the swim board has learned over the past three years is exactly what the swim program costs. This is not based on projections or extrapolations or estimations. This is based on vendor invoices. The reason this is significant is that this was not a, a figure known in aggregate before. Athletic budgets are tracked by school, not by sport. Yet the reason swimming was cut was because of an aggregate expense, the cost to maintain Olinger Pool. As you know, that expense has turned into a small revenue because Olinger is now leased year-round by Northwest Aquatics. So the biggest reason that, that swimming was unfunded is completely gone. The other big financial change is that athletic fees have increased from $100 to $175. This increase means that what we pay for pool time is almost exactly how much we collect in athletic fees. Let me say that again. The revenue we bring in in athletic fees, the athletic fees of swimmers, covers our biggest expense, which is pool rental. What if isn't covered by athletic fees is transportation. This last year, we spent less than $2,700 on busing. <clears throat> we expect that cost to double next year with the new league configuration. But even so, the cost to bring back swimming is less than $10,000 a year. And even better, we have a reserve fund that we're proposing be paid out over a five-year period that will more than cover that difference. So we can come back into the district for at least five years without the district paying any more than they're paying now. Our goal with this proposal <coughs> is to be solution oriented. We're not asking for money that can be used to bring back teachers or librarians. We're not asking for money that could pay for books. If there's no swimming, there's no athletic fee income from swimmers. As the budgets are turning back, I know a lot of programs want to come back too. But how many of those are coming back with enough money in hand to pay their own costs for five years. That's why swimming should be reinstated. Thank you. Thank you, Laurie. Next, we have Jim Wines. Is that close? Close. <laughs> it's Jim Wines. I uh, live at 232 Woodhill Street, Northwest. Uh, I've been involved in swimming in Salem Kaiser School District since 1986. Before I retired from teaching in the district in 2012, I've been a swim coach in McKay, at McKay for 22 years. Uh, when swimming was unfunded in 2011, I was one of the coaches who went to the district to hammer out an innovative plan to save it. Uh, we would create a parent-led booster board to raise money to keep it going. We had no idea really what it would entail or even how much money it would need. The budget had never been combined district-wide before. All the costs uh, were separated. Facilities had one piece of the budget, transportation had six pieces of the budget, and H&R had another six. We did know, not know what we were getting into when, it, when that happened. Uh, but we did know if we didn't save swimming at that time, we would never have the momentum to get it going again. Our goal was to fund through the low budget years to get back and reinstate, reinstated when the economy turned back to where it is now. And the district to its credit, and I have to say that very loudly, the district to its credit agreed. They agreed to put a major portion of each swimmer's athletic fees towards pool rentals and asked the boosters to create a reserve fund to ensure that the pool contract would be covered. We did that. The boosters came through and rallied community support. They wouldn't have been able to rally support if the sport had not been there. Swimming has been a sport in the high schools here in the Salem-Kaiser District since 1927, and the community really gets it. We have had many letters and messages of support from people who want to see the sport preserved. As a no-cut sport, we had many kids who didn't really know how to swim well. During my coaching at McKay, there were times when 50% of my team were new to athletics had never been involved in a sport before, and had never swam a continuous length of a linger pool or croc center. As, we all, uh, as with all the schools, for every champion profiled in the newspaper, there are tens of kids who are still becoming proficient in the water. I, as well as every other coach, can uh, point to dozens of swimmers 
and their brothers and sisters and friends who have joined the teams and have become proficient swimmers, swim instructors, coaches, and many other things. But as the urgency to save swimming lessened, the fundraising has gotten harder. Even with community support, it's, not, it's a lot of work to rally the support and turn that support into dollars. Two parent volunteers from each high school working together to save swimming, not just for their schools, but for all the students, large programs helping small programs, one for all and all for one, was our motto. A board of parents and school, high school students who are involved in a lot of other activities um, have to do fundraising for them. Fundraising to enrich those activities, not just to maintain them. It's a lot of work for coaches too, I can swear to that. <laughs> the coaches were suddenly responsible not only for uh, car washes, ticket sales, and pancake feeds, and so forth, but for letter writing and fundraising. It's time to release parents from the boosters board. It's time to let coaches go back to coaching, and it's time to let students become athletes. It's time to reinstate swimming. I hope you will. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Next, we have Celia Bakuli. Bakuli. Am I getting closer? Bakuli. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> We'll let them introduce you next, Betty, okay? <laughs> My name is Celia Bakuli, 386 Rural Avenue Southeast or Post Office Box 2088. So I am here today to solicit your support for adding swimming back to the school district budget starting in 2014, 2015. Although swimming was cut with many other programs during 20, 2011, swimming has stayed strong and enjoyed excellent community support, enabling us to continue high school swimming uninterrupted for three years. Swimming is one of our healthiest and broadest based high school sports. As a no-cut sport, just under 300 athletes per year in Salem-Kaiser participate. Athletes can look forward to having swimming skills for a lifetime of healthy exercise with virtually no injury. Olinger Pool is now a revenue stream rather than an expense for the district. Swimming is paying its own way. Northwest Aquatics, the Olinger tenant, is reaching out to low-income families with the help of the city of Salem, and it is packed with kids and teenagers learning to swim. This outreach is particularly targeting Parish and North, the closest schools to Olinger, with low-cost lessons and swim team for teenagers. Kids from all over the district are welcome. As one of the outreach volunteers, I tell families that if their child enjoys swimming and works hard, there is a path to swim team for them and they could swim for their high school someday. The glow on parents' faces to know there is a way to prepare their child to participate in, their, in swimming for their high school is priceless. We anticipate the swim program growing and becoming even more diverse with the additional <coughs> access to swimming proficiency provided at Olinger. It is time for swimming to come back into Salem-Kaiser and into the budget. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next up, and I'm going to get this one right, and trust me, nobody gets Patacoli, so I apologize if I'm messing up all your names. Uh, we have Bailey Garfield. That's right, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Um, hi. My name is Bailey Garfield. My address is 2745 Bolton Terrace South, Salem 97302. And I'm also here to talk about the swim program. Three years ago, um, when swimming was on the chopping block, I was one of the swimmers to come he um, here and ask you to not cut our sport. And we were really grateful that swimming was able to continue, even though it meant a lot of fundraising on our part, and on the part of the parents, and the part of the coaches. Um, most of the kids who swim also play other sports, especially water polo. Being a good swimmer makes a big difference in water polo, as you can imagine. And besides school water polo, a lot of the Salem-Kaiser players belong to a club water polo team out of Albany. So we get to know a lot of swimmers and polo players in Albany and McMinnville as well. <coughs> Both West Albany and McMinnville are powerful swim teams that have won state championships in recent years. And the water polo players have said that they don't want to come into our league because our swim program isn't stable. 
And I agree that it is quite unfair that they have to bring their championship programs into a district that's dependent on parent funding. And I don't blame them for being worried about that. But now that the swim program is basically a break-even add-back, I'm not sure why, why we even have to ask for it to come back. Um, the purpose of pay to play was to supplement the athletic budget by those of us who are using it. If swimmers are paying their own way, why can't we come back? Is it a perception problem? Because when we came to you three years ago, there were people who thought we shouldn't be asking for, for a sport to stay in the budget when teachers are being cut. And I can tell you that it is no fun to be sitting in a classroom with 40 other students. Um, but this is apples and oranges. If the swim program expenses are mostly covered by athletic fees, then class size and teacher jobs aren't affected. And if we can come back for less than 10000 per year, that's not even enough to pay for the quarter of a salary of a staff member. And we can pay our own way for five more years. Swimming should come back because it's a smart decision that makes sense. Please don't let perception overrule what's smart. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Audrey Eckstein. Hi, my name is Audrey Eckstein. Um, my address is 4454 Lands Court, Northeast Salem, 97305. <clears throat> I'm a freshman at McKay and a three-sport athlete. I play volleyball in the fall, I swim in the winter, and f run track in the spring. My older brother, he graduated from McKay last year, and he's been, he swam for three years. So I've been around the swim program for quite a while now. And I'm also part of the choir program as well as student government at McKay. Obviously, every program has to raise money. That's just sort of expected if you participate in any extracurricular activity. And because McKay has many low-income students, our swim team raises money on our own to help swimmers buy team suits and swim caps. Plus, we have to raise money for the district in addition to that. This year, I sold tickets for the auction, collected pledges for Swimmerama, sold tickets for the pancake feed, and went and waited on the tables at that event. And I wrote letters for the Adopt a Swimmer program. Most of the fundraisers for other activities might do one of those things. For example, the volleyball teams sold cookie dough this year. But for swimming, not counting what McKay did on its own, I had to do four fundraisers in total. My uncle was a corporate sponsor, so I know there was other fundraisers that didn't involve the kids. And that's great because I'm very ecstatic to have a swim program. I've been swimming on a summer league team for about five years now, and I was very excited to be able to swim for my school this year. But it makes me wonder, why is swimming singled out? I've been told it was because pools are very expensive. But even for volleyball and track, a lot of work has to go on behind the scenes to make the sports happen. Someone has to come up and open the gym, pull out the bleachers, set up nets, sweep up afterwards, and lock all the doors, <clears throat> which is actually mostly done by most of the players. For my friends who play soccer and softball, I know the fields have to be mowed all the time. They have to be chalked, watered, and fertilized and someone has to turn the lights on at night. Because all the schools use the same pools, the cost seems like a lot. But I wonder if you added up all the other costs of other sports and put them all together for the whole district, if other sports didn't cost just as much as swimming does. It seems extremely unfair to me that all the extra burden of fundraising goes all on swimming. If you play three sports, you're supposed to get a pass on athletic fees for the third one. For some reason, even though swimming is not a club sport, it no longer counts towards your three-sport discount. So my parents had to pay $175 for each of my sports. It doesn't seem right to me that after working so hard to raise money for swim, that my parents aren't allowed the three-sport discount. If there isn't enough money in the district's athletic budget, it seems like it would be better if everyone helped. Maybe no one should get a three-sport discount. Maybe all the athletic fees should be raised. Maybe all sports should have to be fundraised for the district-wide budget. If everyone helped, the burden would not be so great. We all want to play our sports, and I'm so happy to have swimming. But finally, and most importantly, I think swimming should be treated like the other sports in the district. Thank you. Thank you. 
That is the end of what I, who I have signed up here on the list to give public testimony at this point. Is there anyone that did not get a chance to sign up to speak that would like to? Okay, we will move forward. <coughs> okay, next, committee discussions and questions. Back to the committee. Anybody have questions, comments, suggestions, things they want to bring up at this point? Mark? Am I on? Mm -hmm. um, so given what we just heard, is, is there going to be an opportunity or mechanism for staff to respond to the, the proposal that was put in front of us and whether the mechanisms and, and reading of how it would work is is accurate yes um may i respond mm -hmm. we received uh, an email earlier uh, i think it was friday relative to requests for swimming but had not received the testimony that we heard this evening uh, we've done some analysis but i think you would understand that since friday in the afternoon till today we haven't had an adequate time to look at all of the information that certainly has come in this evening that and some of this is new information <coughs> Uh, Mr. Wolf has done some analysis. I think uh, what we'd like to do is go back and relook at that based on the testimony we heard this evening to see how that lines up with the work that we've done. Um, I will be very straightforward and simply say that when I proposed this budget, the intent of the budget was to provide primary support to the classroom and to provide for the in infrastructure needs to keep this district moving forward. Uh, as the board, budget committee and the board is aware, we reduced this budget 144 million over the last five to seven years. The amount that we're restoring to the budget for 2014-15 is only 7% of that amount. Um, I do think we have to look at this proposal to see if it is cost neutral. And I'm not, I don't know that it is and I don't know that it isn't. So we have a little bit more analysis work to do and I think we can provide the budget committee with some of that work at our next session. And you at our next session tomorrow you're talking about? No. We, I think we can do some of that tomorrow. Uh, now that we have some of this data from, or some of these comments from tonight, we can take a look at the work we've done to see how that calibrates with some of what we've heard this evening. I'm worried if we just give you what we've worked on so far that we're gonna miss some of the pieces that we heard tonight. Okay, thank you. My yes. question was Sorry. basically the same. Okay, you got it. Jim? Betty, I have a follow-up on swimming. The, the student from McKay, Audrey, I believe is her name, mentioned that uh, swimming doesn't count as a three-sport discount for her. And I was wondering, do we have information regarding that? And I won't, I won't be here tomorrow night. I have to go to the Eagle Feather celebration on behalf of the board tomorrow night. So I was just wondering... I think it's a great question, Jim, and it, it um, is something that we need to look at historically okay. to see how that came about and why that came about. I'm at a disadvantage, as you know, because I don't have the history, but I'm certain people in our organization do. What I'd like to do is go point by point from some of the presentations we'd heard this evening and give you a response as best we can with the information we have in the district at this time. Great. Thank you. Chris? Mine's also related to swimming, and the piece I didn't hear in their discussion was coaching. Um, we heard about facilities, we heard about transportation, but I didn't hear anything about coaching, and I don't know if that's because they have volunteer coaches, and they, could we continue that? So that's just another piece to put into your <laughs> we do puzzle have, for We do have that information, but I think, again, it's best to, for you to see everything at one time rather than us just to piecemeal that for and you And I was evening. just adding that to the, for tomorrow night. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Okay, Kenny, but we're going to just take a one-minute break to turn back our equipment into translation services. Bear with us, please. One of these days, we're going to get to use it. Wait, I'm getting in the bag this time. Putting the toothpaste back in the tube. <laughs>
that's going to have everything. Took notes. Oh, really? also, I got a whole bunch of emails I didn't forward to you that I can forward to you. I, Okay, so one request is of the, the testimony that was provided to us this evening, if you have that written, we did get a couple, I believe. If you could get that to Christy, that would be great. That would be more information for us to take a look at. Thank you. Okay, additional questions? Yes. Um, <coughs> swimming is, Un unsupported by the district. Well, aren't there other sports that are too, like, um, I don't know, tennis, golf, cheer, dance team? Are the, or are those, are those sports that are supported by the district? I, I, can, I can answer that. Um, actually, swimming it, it isn't unsupported by the district. We didn't eliminate swimming. Um, we, st uh, we still have general fund um, allocations going to coaching and differentials. So the, the swim coaches are, are paid out of the general fund. Okay, but what about, are, it, are there other sports that are not football and basketball that are minimally supported by we, the district that? We, we do, we have other sports, like you had mentioned golf is supported mm -hmm. by the district as well, but not, usually not to the, the level that they were five, six years ago. You know, there, there have been modifications over time um, in many of the sports. Swim so, so swimming isn't the only one that's kind of set out that way? Um, I, I, w I wouldn't say uh, it's the only one from that perspective. Uh, I think what, um, what we know about the swimming effort is that there uh, was um, a lot of uh, time and energy put into maintaining it as a sport. Okay. And uh, you heard that from the testimony tonight. Um, to, to add to that too is, so there are other sports that have been cut based on this budget. And as far as I want to think about basketball, we eliminated middle school basketball, things like that. We eliminated middle school football except for eighth grade. So. It's, there are, I mean, swimming is not the only one, correct? That's correct. Okay. Uh, That's girls volleyball in seventh grade and wrestling uh, in middle school as well. Okay. Thanks for that clarification. Okay. Rachel? I mean, something that I would find useful being new to this committee is along with the, the specific... Um, Could you please use your microphone? Oh. Is along with the specific... Um, research on whether swimming is cost neutral, that piece, a little more context on what the changes that were made um, with the cuts and where swimming sort of sits in terms of others, you know, whether there are other comparable sports in comparable situations um, and kind of just so that we have context so it isn't just swimming um, got themselves organized and came, and we don't know who else is now wishing they'd gotten themselves organized. We'll do our best to get that for you tomorrow. Okay. Yes, Mark. Do, do we have any overall analysis across all topics, issue areas, for other places that fundraising is or student fundraising is a major portion of how a certain concept is being supported. Do you have any consolidation of that kind of information you know, across not just sports, but, but other concepts as well? There, every school in this district fundraises. Some of them are fundraising for technology. Some are fundraising for some type of special mm -hmm. books. Some are fundraising for playground equipment. I mean, I think there's a, and athletic teams uh, fundraise for a variety of purposes, sometimes for new uniforms, sometimes a special trip that they'd like to take that maybe is outside the league. Um, there are music groups, booster group groups raise funds. There's a, a tremendous amount of fundraising that goes on in addition to our education foundation and donations that the district receives. So that's a very um, expansive question, and I don't know that we could get you 
how I'm not sure how specific we can be except to say that there are probably it would be probably be an exception to find a school that doesn't fundraise including elementaries so there's there's not currently anything that consolidates that in any way well a lot of this is done through parent groups so we'd have to look through parent group books and and you know I, I think to get that information for you by tomorrow is probably not realistic for me to say we'd get any kind of a real clear answer but I think it, when you have extreme budget times, and we've gone through those across this state, and not only in Salem-Kaiser, this has become part of what schools have done to basically survive as much as it has been teachers taking money out of their pockets to buy classroom supplies. It's unfortunately become a necessity in the state of Oregon, it's, 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 and it's sad. Um, hopefully, in the next biennium, we'll see some increase so that we can take some of the pressure off our schools for trying to, and parent groups for trying to provide some of these things that I think in the past we've um, maybe not taken for granted, but it assumed as part of our customary uh, business. Okay, so Mark, with that, if that is what we would consider a significant staff time question. And, and I, just to be clear, okay. I, I was hoping it already existed. So yeah, I if, don't if it doesn't, so. I'm, I'm not asking for Herculean effort uh, Okay, so we won't vote on whether or not, no, okay. Not necessary. Okay, Rick, do you have a question? Yeah, uh, Rachel's request, uh, which I was sitting here thinking about but not in the same terms, I think is a real important one. Uh, I'd actually, sorry about this, I was a swimmer, I'd forgot about swimming, sorry. <laughs> uh, but uh, in the context of everything we did over the last four or five years with, with cuts, shrinkages, uh, I'd like to see what all it was about and what we did and what we had to do because within this budget we have funds set aside to start a whole new program, uh, a CTE high school. And I want to measure that against everything that we've given up the last five years. Uh, a new program getting started, seed money to get it started, $500,000 or 400 and something versus what all we've done in the past. I'd like to see that picture before I make a vote on on a budget. Could, can I ask a clarifying yes, question? Yep. Rick, um, to answer your question and Rachel to, to um, add context to yours as well, are we looking at just a, kind of the, the list of cuts that we've made over the, the 144 million and, and sort of the breakdown of, of what those cuts were? Because we have that information. I, I believe that's what I'm looking for. I know we, we moved programs around, we shrunk programs, we cut parts of sports, parts of CTE, mm -hmm. we closed five or six schools, we, okay. I just, for me the context of adding back the money we're adding, which is a little bit, and how we're going to use it is really important based on what we did in the past. And I don't have a good memory, so I don't remember everything we did. <laughs> so not just sports related, you're talking in oh, general, yeah. okay. In general, because we cut, we cut library programs, we cut a lot okay. of programs, mm -hmm. and we have within this budget starting a a new area of program, okay. okay. And that, yeah, and that is a great point. And that, but that new area of program is about children and teaching. So I, that's one, yeah. Just I get that they're all about just, children yeah. and teaching. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So Mike, does that you'll be able to? Uh, guessing there's general consensus on just a, a recap of where we were on on that. Okay. And yes, we can bring that for okay. tomorrow. Absolutely. Uh, um, that'll be part of our follow up on the agenda. Yes, Jeff? Just a clarifying question. Um, I was trying to remember what we had going as far as construction at this point. I just noticed the $33 million this year for facilities acquisition and construction, and I was trying to remember what projects. We still have one going on at uh, McNary, and so I was wondering what that was for. Okay, and you want me to answer? Yes, so you're, you're, <laughs> sorry, that's page 57. That's a question uh, for you, Section Mike. Section 4,000. I, I think what you're referring to is the, the capital construction program, that's our bond program. Well, I assume, Th it, I assume yeah. it's part of the bond program. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, and so we have a construction schedule uh, that I can 
bring to the board. It's also, or the budget committee, it's also on our website. And that's where we house the bond proceeds that we've already received. Mm -hmm. And so, as you may recall, um, we've received all of the 242 million, and that's the fund that holds them. Mm -hmm. We have a construction program this summer, I believe it's around 18 million. But you'll see the full amount in the budget because that's where we're holding the funds until okay. they're spent. Okay. okay. That was that was the explanation I wanted. Okay. Thank you. This is not our last summer. Um, we have uh, we will uh, we're on the the tail end of the bell curve as far as the program expenditures. But we have um, two more summers. We will be uh, we feel will be completely wrapped up in uh, summer of 2016. So you shouldn't see a whole lot of money left in the subsequent budgets. Okay. And Mike, that's because that we will then have used all the money from the bond. That's our plan. Okay, thank you. Doug? I have just a comment, not a question. I just, you know, I've been through this process for three years and I must say I'm impressed with the uh, department or the uh, organization's ability to pull this information together quickly and accurately. This is a very complex budget. I've been reflecting on the Secretary of State audit that was recently conducted on closing the achievement gap and the impact of uh, the underserved population in the state. And I've looked at the data in Salem-Kaiser, and I'm reflecting on that as I look through this budget. And I really want to think, and I, I believe that the department is, or the uh, school district is really looking at uh, ways to improve the underserved population, the English learners, students of color, students with disabilities. And I'm seeing that pop up in the programs and in the budget. And I wanted to compliment the district for doing that and ask that you continue to look at that because if we're ever going to get a graduation rate that is anywhere close to something decent, we're going to have to focus on those underserved populations. So kudos to the district personnel and hopefully you'll continue to think about the impact on our special needs populations. Thanks. Jeff? Just another comment. I did uh, want to voice my support of the 13 million for the contingency fund that was put in there for this year. Anyone else? Hmm. <laughs> okay, next steps. We will come back again tomorrow evening and we will have pu public testimony once again and then revolve around the discussion and additional questions if anybody in the committee comes up with any. They will respond, the district staff will respond to us with some to answer the question about the cuts and how it compares to the swimming program and, and other issues. And then at that point, we will determine whether or not we reach a consensus and approve the budget. If not, we will return on Wednesday. At that point, there is no more public testimony. So tomorrow is the end of public testimony, correct? That's right. Okay. Any additional thoughts, comments? Betty, I have one. Okay. I just want to remind board members, uh, we do have an executive session immediately following this. So if we could clear the room just as quickly as possible, uh, the board can meet in executive session to handle a student expulsion matter. Okay, we are adjourned. Thank you.